Hi, so I hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to talk about statistical distributions in Python. Many people who approach Python from another language, like say R, find that the statistic capabilities of Python are actually quite lackluster. So just to illustrate this, if you go into the documentation here for the statistics module in Python, so this is included by default as a standard library, you can see here that it has some mathematical statistical functions, but actually this has super, super little. And the model also claims this. It is simply aimed, as it says here, at the level of graphing and scientific calculators. So if you scroll a bit down, you can see here the available methods and you have something like mean, median, mode. You have some measures of spread like standard deviation. And actually from Python 3.10, you can calculate some correlation and linear regression. But if you're planning to do serious statistics in Python, this is not nearly enough. But this doesn't mean that Python doesn't have this capability. It is simply not included into the standard library. So to get more advanced statistical capabilities, we simply have to go to a different library that is not included as a standard library. And here you can see one of the libraries that provides a bit more meat on the bone when it comes to statistics. So this is SciPy, and SciPy has loads of different things within scientific computing, ranging from discrete Fourier transforms to integration and so on, but specifically it also has a stats submodule that you can use for statistics. And the main feature of this submodule is to deal with probability distributions, both continuous and discrete, as you can see here. So in this video, I want to show you how you can use continuous probability distributions in Python through this SciPy framework. You can also see here, if you're looking for other things like statistical data visualization, then Seaboard is a good choice. If you're looking for classification and regression problems for machine learning, then scikit-learn is a good choice. And if you're looking for more advanced statistical tests, then probably stats models is the way to go. And this kind of illustrates that the statistic capabilities of Python is very spread out in different modules that you have to install to be able to use them. It doesn't mean that Python doesn't have statistic capabilities, it's simply spread out through many different modules. So let's focus in on the topic of this video, namely probability distributions. So here I've opened a Jupyter Notebook that is kind of partly filled out, and I'll go through this with you. So first of all, to use the probability distributions, we need to import them. So we can go into SciPy, stats, and then import the ones we need. So as of writing, the documentation says that they have over 80 continuous probability distributions. I think actually they have even more than this, but for now we'll just stick to two of them, namely the normal distribution and the uniform distribution. Should be a comma here, let's run this. It looks good. So I already have SciPy installed. If you haven't, then just look at their website for how to install it, either through pip or conda. So for the basic usage. So the basic usage of scipy.stats is really all about distributions and their associated objects. This can be probability distribution functions, it can be cumulative distribution functions, or whatever. In this video, I'll just assume that you know these terms. If you're unsure about what a probability distribution is or a cumulative distribution function, then you can just Google these terms to see what they actually mean. And as I mentioned, the package also have discrete distributions. I'll just stick to the continuous ones for simplicity. So let's start with a normal distribution. And the first thing we can do is just to evaluate the probability distribution function of a normally distributed random variable. So we just access norm and just do PDF. And here it's a few things we need to specify. First, we need to specify the location. This will essentially be the mean of the distribution. Let's put this to one. And then the scale, which will be essentially the standard deviation. Let's put this to 0 0.5. And then actually the point we want to evaluate the PDF in. So let's put this to 1.1. And here you can see that you get this number out. If you change this to one, then you change the value, of course. So here, since the mean is located at one, this will be a quite high value. While if I change this to 11, this will be super small because a normally distributed variable will have a PDF that decreases quite sharply on both sides. So both 11 and minus 11 will be essentially zero. So let's change this back to one. And one of the things I think is nice is that you can either specify one number here or you can specify a list. So I can have 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2, for instance. And then I will just get back a NumPy array. So here we have the PDF evaluated at 1.0, this is at 1.1, and this is at 1.2. So if you know about NumPy, you can now manipulate this in many interesting ways. And of course, if you just want a basic Python list and don't want to deal with NumPy, you can always just use the list constructor like this to turn it into a usual Python list. I'll keep it as a NumPy array because that's usually more convenient when you're doing scientific computing. You can also use the CDF or the cumulative distribution function. And as you probably expect, that's CDF. And here it's exactly the same. So we need to specify the location and the scale. I'll just copy this. 
And for the value, let's say that we pick 0 0.5, then you get the value for the cumulative distribution function. So recall that the cumulative distribution function tends towards one. So if I provide a higher value, I'll get something closer and closer to one. So say 100, then I'll be basically one. And again, here you can specify more values at the same time if you want. So just do a list, let's do minus 0 0.2, we can do 0 0.5 as we did, and maybe 1.5. So it's super easy when working with distributions to get both the PDF and the CDF. You can also very easily find quantiles. So what you then do is to use .ppf, this stands for percent point function. And here you can specify again, let's do the same location and scale. And let's do a Q value, which is the quantile which let's say this to be 0 0.5, that gives you essentially a median. And recall that for a normally distributed variable, the median is the same as the mean, which is again here the same as the location. So that gives me one. But I could have gotten 0 0.75, so the 75% quantile, and here you have 1.33. So finding quantiles of a distribution is super easy by using this function here, which is essentially the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. Finally, what I think is important is to randomly sample from a distribution. And what you can then do is to go to norm and then random variates. So this is RVS. As usual, you need to specify location and scale. I'll just do the same one again. But you can change this, of course, if you want. And then we need to know the size. So essentially how many values we should sample. So let's do maybe just five. And here you can see again, we get a NumPy array of five sampled values from this distribution. And before doing a final thing, I want to point out that there are more functionality in scipy.stats than this, but usually when dealing with distributions, some of the main things you want to be able to do is do probability distributions, cumulative distribution functions, quantiles, and sampling. So I don't want to do a full course on scipy.stats, but I just wanted to get you started about using probability distributions in Python. The final thing I wanted to mention is freezing a distribution. As you can see up here, we've specified lock and scale, over and over and over again, and this becomes kind of tedious, right? So you can do what's called freezing the distribution in a statistical language, and just a translate for those coming more from a coding background, this is just initiating an instance of the class with these parameters so that you don't really have to specify them over and over again. Now let's do it for the uniform distribution. So recall that I also imported that one here, the uniform, then I can do uniform RV, just make a variable, then I initiate this, and then I specify them here. So let's put the location at one and scale at four. For the uniform distribution, this really means that the start of the interval is at the value one, and the end of the interval is four parts over, so that's five here. Now I have in the language of statistics, freeze the distribution. So now I can use the uniform RV variable and do all of the same things over again, PDF, CDFs, PPFs, and RVS but I don't have to specify these over and over again now. So just to show you this, we can use uniform RV and then do PDF. And here we can just specify now a list. So let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as you can see here for the zero value, you get zero because it's outside a uniform range. Then you get 0 0.5 here. And then finally you get zero because you're again outside the range. So personally, I typically initiate it here and freeze the distribution when I'm working with it, simply because then I don't have to specify these over and over again, and I avoid making silly mistakes later down the line. So that's basically it. I hope this can get you started with using probability distributions in Python. I'll leave a link in the description to the documentation page so that you can see that you can do much more than I've showed with scipy.stats. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.